Hello everyone and welcome back to the Flying Sandal channel. So today we're going to do a follow-up on this guy. This is the fuselage of my uh, ready-made RC Anaconda, which as I mentioned before, I'm going to build into, build into a, a UAV um, capable ship with basically a flight controller is what I'm going to go work and put in here. It's going to be a, firm, um, a flight controller using the firmware Ardu Pilot. And right now, it's still the way I showed it in some of my previous videos with nothing but um, RC receiver. And so I started looking at and thinking about the uh, types of electronics that I would put in here. And that's what we're going to cover today. So uh, welcome back, stick around, uh, grab a drink or something. You know, we're just going to have a chat about how uh, we would select some of the components and uh, the, the components that we would actually select. And uh, it's gonna have a lot to do with what I had, um, you know, in my stash of electronics. Uh, and it really is what I had in the box because I had been spending some time before building some nice UAVs. And so I have some leftover um, components. Primarily what I have is an orange flight controller that I had gotten for a different, for a different build. Uh, but I have it laying around and I think this would be a great project to use it. So um, I have it right over here. This is what's gonna drive my plane, fly my plane for me once uh, it's all set up and configured. So I'm gonna show you what we're going to use and how we're gonna put it together. Okay, so stick around. Hopefully you will like this video. <clears throat> okay, so before we get started and talking about what it will take to build an autonomous airplane, let's just quickly say that um, how we're going to cover some of this material. So I'm gonna try to give you a little bit of background. I won't keep it, I'll keep it slightly high level because I also want the video to be entertaining. Um, I'm really looking for people to tell me what they want to learn more about. I mean, is it, <clears throat> leave me in the comments, right? A note that says whether you prefer a video that is more entertaining, just kind of show you what it is, but you don't really plan on doing anything. Or tell me if you really care that I make a video that shows every component, how it's set up and how it's configured, right? So because you want to do it and maybe you have a flight controller or you want to get a flight controller and you want to know exactly how to uh, wire and configure all the different components. So give me a hint as to what you want to see. For now, I'm going to go somewhere in the middle, enough to tease those people who want to get into the details to leave me some comments and to tell me what they want to see. Uh, but also relatively high level so that those of you who are not all that interested, who are not planning on building your own autonomous airplane, but basically you just want to learn a little bit about them. So kind of give you that high level view of things. So I'm going to go for that. I'm going to go kind of like in the middle, give you enough background, paint a picture, show you the pieces and then kind of how they work together. Uh, but if you're the guy who wants all the details, let me know and we'll make some other videos that are more detailed and uh, that way we'll have kind of like the deep dives into each one of the components and how to set it up and configure it. Uh, but this video is going to be a little bit more general, right? Just kind of paint the picture and the idea of where I'm going with this. And then we'll see what, what kind of uh, content people want out of this channel. So I'm trying to, again, figure out who's interested and how, how to do it, right? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the computer. I'm gonna show you the diagram. There's a really good diagram that shows how everything works in an autonomous airplane. So I'm gonna show it to you and we're gonna break it down as to what are the essential pieces and we're gonna use that as our starting guide. Okay, so let's go to the computer. So here we are at the computer and like I mentioned before, what we're looking at here on the screen is a diagram of all the different pieces that make up um, an Ardu pilot. They call it the uh, Cube Pilot Ecosystem. It's showing just about every single possible option you could have. We're not gonna get all these options, but we're gonna have a few of them, uh, some of the uh, key and basic ones, right? So I'm gonna tell you what the components are. Uh, let me make this a little bit smaller. And first of all, let me tell you that the heart and the key to the whole autonomous system is the flight controller. And the flight controller is not the whole thing. The flight controller is just the orange piece of it. That's the orange cube. This is made by a company called Profi CNC, and they have a lot of information on their website, not only the different pieces, the different components. Honestly, it can be a little bit daunting figuring out what all the pieces are, but we're just gonna cover it uh, in the basic components and we're going to keep it relatively simple, okay? 
So the first thing is the cube, that orange piece. It has the main computer, the main processor. And everything else around it, what is called the carrier board, is this black part of it. And so basically that's what you plug in this computer <clears throat> and gives you all the connections for all the different hardware that you want to run on your airplane and all the sensors, okay? So the first thing you need to do is you need to power it. And now the cube has this cool thing. You see it has power one and power two. Basically it gives you a redundant power option. And um, kind of like the neat things about that is that uh, if you were for whatever reason to have one of the electronic components fail, right? Um, let's say for example here, <clears throat> what we're seeing is that power one is connected to this power module. Well, these power modules are susceptible to damage. They could fail in the air, right? And if you only have one connection then, and that failed, basically your computer would shut down and you would have no way of controlling your airplane. You would go down. But because you have this power two option, then you can put in a secondary power module, right? In this particular case, this is another step down module. They both are gonna feed five volts to the computer but they do it independently from the same battery. You could use multiple batteries, uh, but in this particular case, it's still from the same battery, so it's assuming that your battery is not gonna fail, but if one of these electronics fails, the other one is still powering your flight controller. So that's the reason you see two, and that's redundant power. So a lot of these things on a system like the Cube, uh, it's not an inexpensive system. It's actually a relatively pricey option, the Orange Cube. But the advantage of it is that it has redundant gyros, it has redundant compasses, it has redundant power. So all these systems, hopefully, are gonna work together to keep your airplane in the air and avoid you having a, an incident where you might lose your airplane. So um, <clears throat> we talked about the computer, we talked about the carrier board, and we talked about powering it, okay? Now, <clears throat> most flight controllers will require a GPS, and this is GPS is used for, of course, positioning the system, but it also gets time of day, it also gets compass location, uh, heading information, and basically the GPS is like the one basic thing you need to have an autopilot. Otherwise, you shouldn't even have an autopilot, right? You can have just a regular RC receiver, maybe like a, a, a gyro board, right? <clears throat> but if you're gonna have an autonomous plane, you have to have a GPS. Now, they're showing two different GPS systems here. Um, <clears throat> basically, and, and they're connected into two different ways. One is um, the uh, multi-band RTK GNSS, which is a really, really high end. It's even labeled here as the pro version. And on the other hand, you have a HERE 3, which is a more typical USB. The only difference is that, or the only thing that's special about it is, is that it's connected via CAN bus. Uh, it's using a CAN bus splitter because you can connect many things to a CAN bus. In this particular case, you can either, if you only have is the GPS, you connect it directly to the CAN port on the uh, flight controller. Um, or if you have multiple CAN things, you can have um, a CAN bus, you can have servos, you can have, in this case, an optical flow module. Um, you can connect them in a bus splitter like this, so you can have multiple connections, and they all connect on the same on the same CAN bus. By the way, cars use CAN bus, and it's been very reliable for many years. And... <clears throat> It's a relatively recent development that they're using these CAN buses on radio control models, right? On, on um, autonomous airplanes, basically. And it's because it's a very reliable <clears throat> bus system for communication. Okay, so I don't want to dwell too much in that. That could be its own topic. But basically, this is the type of GPS that I'm going to use. And I'll show you some of my components here a little bit later on. But that would be the kind of GPS to connect. So, so we covered basically just the board, uh, the cube, the carrier board the power and the GPS, right? Now, the only other thing that you need, of course, is you need a way to man to control your airplane. So you're gonna need to connect servos to your airplane. This particular diagram is showing quads. Uh, it's for like a multi-rotor setup. But these are the servo outputs, what is called the main out. So one, two, three, four, for example, if you have a four channel radio, they could be aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. And that would be what controls the um, the plane. So normally where these would go into your standard RC receiver, now they go into the flight controller. And you obviously need to feed um, the radio control signal into your flight controller so that you basically are gonna say, what would normally be just your aileron input, 
it's gonna go into an RC in input. In this case, they're using a Hearlink, which is the company's um, radio control and video link product. I'm not gonna use that. <clears throat> I'm gonna use a, a more standard radio control link. And so I'm basically going to feed it into the RC in. If I'm gonna use an S bus, although more than likely I'm gonna use either stick to the crossfire or uh, use Express LRS. And so I'm gonna put that in through one of the UARTs, okay? And the UARTs are basically the connections that let you uh, exchange data with your flight controller. And so <clears throat> many of these that are labeled GPS, are labeled telemetry, are labeled, um, what's the other one? Basically the GPS, the telemetry one and two, those are basically your, your UARTs for this flight controller. So if you are familiar with multi-rotors or um, flight controllers in general, they all use UARTs and they have a transmit and a receive that goes to a transmit and a receive and you basically flip them and connect them. So the transmit goes to the receive and the receive goes to the transmit so that they're in and out communicating with each other. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna connect a crossfire there and I'm gonna connect any one of those UARTs. Okay, so those would be the basic component. If you notice, there's many other things on this diagram, but if you think about the basic ones are gonna be your cube, your carrier board so you can make the connections you're gonna to need to power it up. You wanna give it a GPS feed. You wanna give it your radio control signal and you wanna give it a place to connect your servos, which are gonna be these main outs, okay? <clears throat> the rest of the components that you see here are for different subsystems. If you have a multi-rotor, well, those are gonna need some additional components. You're seeing motors, you're seeing speed controllers. But again, that would be for a multi-rotor. For an airplane, instead, we're gonna have servos and we're going to have them connected to that main out. Okay, so um, those are some of the basics. Now, I am gonna show you one thing that is super cool. Um, they're, here, they're talking about this RF design a telemetry radio. I am gonna use one of these, and the reason is that when my plane is out flying, I will have the radio control link as a way to send signals and get telemetry back from my airplane. But I wanna have my computer hooked up to the airplane as well, and I wanna uh, be able to send the mission and track the airplane as it's moving in the air. So the way that you track that is you receive telemetry via one of these telemetry radios. So this RF, in this case, in the picture, it's a 900X. I'm gonna use a 900 plus, and that is gonna let me communicate with the computer. Okay, very well. So hopefully that overview of the diagram was useful that we did on the computer. Now I have some parts here laid out on my desk, so let me show them to you. It's going to let me just connect with my laptop very conveniently. That way, when it's time to set up and configure the flight controller, I can do it through this. Uh, it's a relatively lo low um, power connection, so it's short range, but it will be perfect for working on the flight controller here around the house and uses low power and I can just power it directly from, from the flight controller. Now, here are the telemetry radios that are going to be used for actually flying and sending telemetry back and forth. So this is a pair or R of RFD 900 plus radios. And these radios are um, rated for good distances. They say up to 40 kilometers, depending on the antennas, right? But I'm gonna use the standard antennas with these. Uh, one set of these is gonna go on the um, modem that I'm gonna designate as the air unit. So this one's gonna go on the airplane and to mount it to the airplane, uh, there is this board which lets you simply turn it around, you plug it in here, and then you can use this cable <clears throat> to connect it to the flight controller. So um, simplifies the installation significantly and gives you a breakout because one of the main considerations with uh, something like a modem is that to be able to achieve the long range, it has uh, uh, power requirements that surpass what you should really be using out of these ports. So <clears throat> the radio will connect into a telemetry port, um, basically one of these telemetry one or telemetry two ports, and it will power on the radio. However, it will not provide sufficient power, meaning the current that it will need. So what I'm gonna do is when you put it into this breaker board, <clears throat> Uh, you basically remove the little jumper. That that jumper is there to basically bridge the pins for the USB and power it from USB when you're installing software and configuring it. But for flying, you would remove the jumper 
install it onto the board. And so what that does is it takes the pin where you normally provide power to it and then breaks it out so that you can give power on this side, external power. So I can feed in negative and positive. I can, for example, use over here, I've got uh, a BEC. It's called a UBEC. <clears throat> and basically this one goes three amps, maximum five amps, and I can use it onto a 6S LiPo. So <clears throat> I can just make a, make a little plug that will feed me XT30 voltage into it. And then this uh, negative and voltage will go into the external power, for example. Let's see. So negative is going to be the bottom one and power will be the top one. So I would just simply plug it in there like so. And then I would have <coughs> external power for it and all the power that that radio is going to need. So that's the way to connect them, and that's a breakout for the additional power. You don't need the board, you can do it if you just wire it the right way, uh, but the board definitely is a nice way to connect it, because once you put the radio on here, uh, you use a screw to secure it through that hole onto the board so it stays securely, and then you get three new mounting locations for attaching it to the plane like so. So that's going to make it um, nice to connect that. Now, these two radios work as a pair, and so this is going to be what I use in the ground station. And so for the ground station, I'm going to use these uh, fairly big honking antennas. But the idea is that I will have these antennas and then I'm going to be able to set them at 90 degrees like so as well. And so I will have them on the ground station and I will connect this radio, the ground, the ground radio to my computer using an FTDI cable. So basically <clears throat> I will plug uh, this, the cable is like this, looks like so. Basically the cable has an FTDI connection on one end that will connect to the radio and then just a USB on the other end that will connect to my computer. So radio, computer, and that will be, give me a ground radio. And then <clears throat> radio onto the little adapter with those little antennas and will connect to the flight controller and that will be my air unit basically. Okay, so <clears throat> that is going to be the way that I'm going to do maintain communication with my airplane while it's in the air. This is uh, just a very convenient, very quick Wi-Fi connectivity to the flight controller while I work on it on the ground. And um, <clears throat> I do have this additional component, which is a PDB, normally for a racing quad. The reason I'm going to install this one in the plane is because I'm going to want to power other things. And so <clears throat> I am going to have this connector here uh, connected to the battery and then I have this extra one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pigtail here where I will connect this and install this on the plane somewhere. And so that way I'm going to have a way to either use these pads for additional power connections. If I have something, for example, I'll be able to connect this UBEC to one of those and have up to three amps. These are not as big in terms of the power they can provide. They can provide up to two amps. But for example, from here, I'm going to be able to power my um, FPV unit. So I'm going to use a DJI Air unit for video. And this one needs about 0.6 amps. And so I'm just going to feed that one from the PDB. Uh, I, I get options here for 5 volts and 10 volts. So that's going to be great for powering the Air unit, uh, the DJI FPV Air unit, so to have HD. Um, I have a couple of additional extra pieces that I may install. So <clears throat> on the diagram, we saw uh, optical flow and LiDAR sensor. Now what this does is that it has a laser, like a small laser ranging system, and it can go up to two meters or right around six feet. And that is used for when you come in and you want to do autonomous landings, then that way the plane knows how far it is from the ground and it could do things like flaring and things like that. So that would be very nice. Uh, a couple of additional pieces that I may install. This is just like a voltage monitor. It's just an LCD display. And what I can do is if I install this on the outside of the plane and plug it in, for example, to that PDB, to one of the battery leads, then I'll be able to have a display on the outside of the plane that quickly tells me the status of the battery. So that way I know if I have enough battery to fly, etc. just at a glance. Uh, another thing that I have here, this is an RC switch. And the way this works is if you plug it into one of the servo outputs, then you can use it to control things like lights 
or turning on and off the air unit or turning on and off whatever you want. So I'm thinking that maybe I'll use it to put on lights and uh, to put on strobes and things like that. So I can use this for a, a way to control any lights that I decide to put on the Anaconda. So we'll see. I haven't made up my mind about that. Another thing that I may use, haven't quite decided 100%, is this is one of those vibration isolation uh, mounts. And it has two plates and then these rubber grommets going between the plates. And I could use that to then mount the, mount the flight controller onto that for a little bit of vibration isolation, which would be a great thing. So maybe I will go for that if I can just figure out exactly how to mount it, right? It has a base with these four holes. So I need to figure out a way that I would mount that, mount that into the inside of the uh, airplane fuselage. So um, that's an overview of the parts that are going to go into the airplane. Again, the bare minimum would be the flight controller with power and the GPS. That alone could fly the plane. The rest of the things here, the, um, <clears throat> the telemetry radios for configuring inside the house and for flying, of course, it's optional, but it's very nice to have the ability to connect to the plane while it's in the air and flying. Uh, some power management. Uh, I have another buck converter that does the same thing as this one um, and this one. So these three are for power management. So there's going to be just some options that I'm going to have while I build the plane for exactly how I want to power it. The camera for doing FPV, of course. And then if I want to get into autonomous landing and I want to measure the distance to the ground for the plane, and this is used when, when you're coming in for a landing, you want to flare the plane. So it does kind of like a nice gentle landing. So that would be nice to have for that. Um, okay, so these are the electronics that are more than likely going to go into this guy right here. So I'm going to have to find a way to mount them <clears throat> probably back in here where I have some room, some space for it. Um, so yeah, that's what's going to happen. So I'm looking forward to building it. Oh, this guy wants to go. There we go. So I'm looking forward to building it. Um, Yeah, so those are going to be the parts that go into the build of this Anaconda. I haven't fully decided exactly how I'm going to install it. So it's the first time that I build um, a flight controller into an Anaconda, but I can see a place where I could put a little shelf and put all my electronics there. Uh, some sensors are going to need to be installed on the outside of the plane. Um, I didn't mention because I don't have here an airspeed sensor, so that's going to be another thing that I have on order. That's the one thing that I didn't have, so I've ordered that one, should come in a few days. Um, but an airspeed sensor is actually very useful for being able to better manage your plane, better manage the power, and also um, to be able to correctly um, get the, uh, the speed of the airplane. It can get it via the GPS. As the plane is moving, it'll get two coordinates and then be able to figure out the speed of the airplane. But an airspeed sensor is way better, so that way it's compensating for the uh, wind, etc. So I want to have one of those. I'm going to set one up. Um, so stick around, you know, subscribe if you want to follow along. I'm going to try to do videos as I build. You know, first I'm probably going to figure out where everything goes, install the flight controller, figure out where all the sensors are going to go, where the radios are going to go. Um, I'm going to build the electronics on the bench and get everything working before I mount everything into the airplane. So you're going to get a chance to see on my bench how everything is set up, how everything is going to work. So hopefully you will like it. Um, again, if you want to see more details, leave me a comment. Let me know what parts you want to learn more about. Uh, I could do individual breakout videos that show in more detail each of the components and each of the configurations. Um, it's similar to when I was talking about building the airplane. There are a lot of parts and it looks very daunting if you look at everything all at once. But as you're tackling the things and the components one by one, it really starts becoming simpler. And then configuring each one of the components can be a little tricky because in Ardu Pilot there may be four or five or even more parameters to go and change for each thing that you want to set up. But as you break it down, then uh, it really becomes more manageable, right? So you go one thing at a time and at first you get the power sensor working and then you get the GPS working and then you get maybe the telemetry radio working. So thing, thing by thing and piece by piece, you get them working and you're kind of like breaking down a bigger build into just more manageable pieces. So that's what we're going to do. Stick around for that. Now, <clears throat> please help 
out, uh, grow my channel. I'm just getting started into actually putting some effort into my YouTube channel. Um, for the longest time, I have been thinking about doing this, but I hadn't done it. Uh, now it seems like I'm starting to get a little bit of traction with my videos. So hopefully you like this video. Give me a like, please share it, you know, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing more content. I'm going to try to make it in a way that is a little bit more approachable. I'm going to try to simplify it. Um, I'm going to give you what you need and not much more than that, right? Some of the things and the pieces that you see here, I consider them essential. Some other people may think that, uh, you know, maybe you don't need two telemetry radios, but you're going to see why you're going to see how they make life simpler at the end of the day. So if you have been curious about building an autonomous airplane, then stick around, you know, come along for the ride. Uh, I'm using a cube orange here, but I also want to do a build later on with, uh, for example, a Matek flight controller, which is much less expensive. And you're going to see that the build principles, all the connections, the flight controller, the settings, the configuration, it's all basically the same. The only thing you do with a Matek flight controller is you actually spend more time doing the wiring. But um, you're going to see that you can go with a system that is either you know much more professional and, and thus a little bit more expensive or something that is much more accessible even if you don't have all those uh, redundant fail safes etc. So please again do subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment, let me know what you like about it, let me know what you don't like about it. Am I taking too much time explaining things or am I not doing a good enough job? So let me know. All right. Uh, hopefully you like this video, you learned something and you're looking forward to seeing more. So please don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to keep them up in the air. All right. Take care.